Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Guys, thanks again for joining me for another episode. We're going to continue on with respiratory emergencies. This is part seven, and we're going to talk about pulmonary embolisms. And not a lot we can do in the field. A lot of this is, is supportive. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I think it's important to recognize or suspect, rule out, or however you want to say, when a patient is having a pulmonary embolism or pulmonary throm- thrombosis going on, right? So, of course, I would like to remind people, guys, why this is important. It's not just for exams. I know this is key information. You'll see a lot of this stuff on exams on these Monday Minutes. But it's also to build your knowledge base, guys. It's hopefully going to encourage you to look more into these subjects. If you don't understand the things that I'm saying, if these key points that I'm pointing out to you don't ring a bell, okay, that it's going to encourage you to go ahead and look in the book and that chapter and read more about it so that you do understand what I'm saying so that when you see the key points and the key information on exams in your patient interactions, in your uh, assessments, right, it's going to help you pass the exams, of course, but also it's going to help you make better clinical decisions, write better reports, and interact much more efficiently with not just your patients, but with other healthcare professionals like doctors, nurses, and your fellow paramedics. So today, like I said, short episode, but talking about pulmonary embolisms, you know, this is caused by a blockage, okay, of a pulmonary artery by a foreign matter, okay? Um, Usually it's a blood clot that gets formed in the pelvis or deep leg vein, okay? Um, There's about 50,000 deaths from this annually. Five of them are sudden. About 10% of that 50 are what actually end up dying, and actually those 10% die in the first hour. Okay, so this is serious stuff, guys. So you've got to keep this in mind when you're assessing your patients, okay, because these patients present in a wide range of of, uh, ways, okay? So what are some of the risk factors you can think of when you are assessing patients, right? Talk about obesity, people that don't move around a lot, right? They have this sedentary lifestyle, uh, infections, um, thrombophlebitis, of course, blood uh, birth control pills, pregnancy. Uh, they have had a recent fracture of a femur, okay? Another way for them to get it, or a pelvis, pelvic fracture or a hip fracture, okay? Um, recent surgeries as well, and certain blood diseases, Okay, all the th- types of things, this isn't all of them, but these are some of the major risks of a patient that might get a PE. Okay, so if you have a patient that had recent surgery and is complaining of things, signs and symptoms that might be a PE, kind of keep that in the front of your in the front of your, your mind, okay? So before we get into some of the assessments, just so you know how this all works, right? The blood supply of to the lung gets blocked, okay? The, that clot it breaks off usually in the leg, like we mentioned, follows the blood just fine, goes through the right atria, the right ventricle, then gets out to the lung, right? But that's where it can't go any further. That's where you start having issues with the lung getting ischemic, okay? Blood starts to pool in the lung. Then you get the right ventricle will go ahead now and start having problems pumping because it's pumping against very high pressure, okay? And then you get a very acute core pulmonal and a decreased blood supply to the body, the lung, the heart, all that stuff, all right? So this is what's happening when that clot gets in there, okay? And... Your signs and symptoms, and when you look at the assessment, can be a little different. If it's a massive PE, 
patient can be sent. They can have altered mental status. They can be. They can have syncopal episodes. They can go into cardiac arrest. Have very profound hypotension, right? Because the decreased blood supply, stuff's not going anywhere. Pressure on on all the the arteries and everything, right? So that's your massive PE. Now smaller ones, the ones that you can actually get confused because they can be similar to, to an MI, the signs and symptoms, right? But you got to kind of keep it in your mind that, okay, maybe the EKG is coming out perfect. They're not really fitting an MI sort of uh, uh, presentation, but they've got sudden chest pain, right? They've got um, uh, shortness of breath and respiratory distress, right? But sometimes the pain will increase when they breathe, all right? It'll be pleuritic in nature. Right? They might be wheezing. All right? Tachycardic. Okay? Tachypnic. All right? This is what can happen with the smaller ones. And one thing that I've noted a lot too with smaller smaller PEs is that any sort of exertion the patient makes, they'll become much more respiratory uh, distressed. They get much more short of breath if they try to do any sort of activity, even simply from moving from a chair to a stretcher or a chair to a stair chair, things like that, okay? So lots of stuff to think about. The signs and symptoms here when you're assessing the patient are kind of all over the place and can mimic many, many things. That's why we go back to what we talked about when you talk about the risks and you know, recent things that might have happened, surgeries, pregnancies, medications that they're on, stuff like that can tie in together. Okay, and this is all part, guys, just to kind of go back real quick, all part of being a good clinician, right? Building your knowledge base, not just with this, but all the other things we talk about, like an MI, right? Like other breathing problems and filtering down what it is could be going on with your patient. So you know if you can treat it and how you're treating it and why you're treating it, okay? All kind of ties in together, guys, okay? All right, so... Like I mentioned earlier, there's not a lot we can do for these patients, right? Because we can't get in there and get rid of that clot. We don't have anything to, you know, get it out of the lung, right? So it's supportive. It's your ABCs. It's high concentration of oxygen. It's getting an IV, right? Doing an EKG, all right? Being alert, staying alert for the patient that might go into shock, all right? And try to transport them in a nice, calm position of comfort, all right, and get into the hospital and expressing your concerns of a PE to the staff, all right, because like I mentioned earlier, you know, some of these patients may only have an hour to live if there isn't some sort of intervention going on, all right, so that's how we're managing it, again, very supportive in nature, okay, but as again, being a good clinician, understanding this stuff, is going to kind of give you a pep in your step, right? It's going to give you that alertness. It's going to give you that that presence of mind to say, hey, something's going on here that's serious, and I got to get this person to the hospital, right? So stuff to keep in mind, guys. Um, I hope this kind of makes sense to you. Uh, and like I said, if it's not clicking, you're not getting these key points, backtrack to your textbook, go online, all right? and research this topic, all right, so this way you have a better understanding of it, and these key, uh, these key elements will click, and again, help you do better on your exams, and when you're doing your patient care and your assessments. So, guys, I hope you engage with me. I'm on a couple of social media sites, I'm pretty active on them, um, doing sort of like my behind the scenes stuff, my little personal life, uh, stuff like that. Um, and I'm on Twitter at EMS Safe and Instagram at EMS Safe. And of course, on Facebook, you can get me there. It's facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. So, guys, if you're looking for some more content, some more ways to increase your knowledge base or to help you prepare for exams, go check out the main site at emsseo.com. Okay, and that SEO stands for your success, your education, which is in turn going to give you opportunities, okay, 
and EMS and also opportunities to do better for your patients. Okay, so go check out the website there. Got lots of stuff there, free and very low cost ways to get you to the next level in your EMS career. All right, guys, that's it for me. If you have comments, questions, concerns, send them over to me. It's contact at emsofficehours.com. And be sure to go over to emsofficehours.com as well if you're watching this on YouTube or another venue. And check out the previous episodes. Check out the podcast and other interesting articles and content that I have on the blog as well. All right, guys, as always, questions, concerns, send me that email. Like this in the, in the comments below. Share it with your EMS peers. And as always, until next time, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours on the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.